Right now, under the Baltic Sea, the world's longest underwater tunnel is taking shape. 18 kilometers of concrete, engineering, and sheer courage. A structure so massive, it might even influence air travel between Scandinavia and Central Europe. But what if this mega project isn't just a technological marvel, but also a huge threat to nature? Can progress truly be achieved without compromise? Welcome to Big Builds. In this video, we'll dive into the fascinating world of the Feman Belt Tunnel, an undertaking set to change Europe forever. We'll show you the incredible dimensions, the challenges, and what this tunnel means for our future. The real question is, why go to all the trouble to build a gigantic tunnel under the Baltic Sea? Because a solid connection between Germany and Scandinavia is incredibly important. Germany is Sweden's second largest export market, there's a lot of goods flowing back and forth, from IKEA's Billy bookcases to high-tech products from Denmark. Everything needs to be transported quickly and efficiently. Who wants to wait hours for a ferry when there could be a simpler solution? But back in the beginning, the idea of better connecting Germany and Denmark, it isn't new. As far back as the 19th century, clever minds were thinking about a Vogelflugina, which has nothing to do with birds, but rather refers to the direct straight route between Hamburg and Copenhagen. Of course, there were no cars or trains back then, but the vision was already there. In the 1960s, a big step was taken. The Femansund Bridge was built. At last, Feman Island was connected to the German mainland. But the Baltic Sea problem? That was handled by a ferry connection between Puttgarden and Rotby. It worked, but it wasn't perfect. Ferries were slow, depended on the weather, and often dampened the mood for European trade. Then, in the 1990s, things started moving again. Why not a permanent link, asked engineers and politicians. A bridge, a tunnel, as is always the case with such projects, discussions dragged on. But in 2008, a breakthrough finally came. Denmark and Germany agreed to build the Feman Belt Tunnel, and the best part, Denmark would cover the construction costs. In return, Germany promised to modernize roads and rail on its side. But this isn't just about Germany and Denmark. The Feman Belt Tunnel is part of a much bigger plan, the Trans-European Transport Network. Designed to better connect Europe from Malta to Finland, this is where the tunnel becomes the heart of the so-called ScanMed Corridor, the most important transport route between Northern Europe and the rest of the continent. If I told you we're building a tunnel under the Baltic Sea that's longer than 180 football fields laid end-to-end, -end, would you believe me? Welcome to the Feman Belt Tunnel, a structure so gigantic it sounds like an architect's fever dream. The tunnel stretches 18.1 kilometers, and it won't just let cars and trains through. It'll house four traffic lanes, two railway tracks, and a maintenance tunnel in the middle. This thing isn't just huge, it's also smartly designed. It's made up of 89 gigantic concrete sections called segments. Each segment is 217 meters long. That's taller than many skyscrapers. And the weight? 73,000 tons each. And there's more. The tunnel requires an incredible 3.2 million cubic square meters of concrete, enough to build a wall around the entire Earth, a sort of concrete version of the equator. Then there's the steel, 360,000 tons of reinforced steel, almost as heavy as a thousand jumbo jets. But what do we do with all the excavated material? A staggering 19 million cubic meters of sand and soil will be dredged from the seabed. So how do you even start on something like this? Obviously, you begin by preparing the seabed. Specialized dredgers remove soil with great precision because an unstable foundation is the last thing you want for a tunnel. The actual tunnel segments, the gigantic concrete behemoths, they aren't built right on site. No, they're produced at a mega factory in Rodbyhavn, Denmark, a facility as large as 200 football fields. There, 89 tunnel elements are manufactured, each 217 meters long, 42 meters wide, and 10 meters high, weighing 73,000 tons each. Once a segment is finished, it's launched into the water. And here comes the exciting part. These things, they can actually float. 73,000 tons of concrete, they glide across the water like enormous walruses until they arrive at their designated spot. That's when it gets tricky. Each segment must be lowered with millimeter precision. But why go through all that trouble? In fact, an immersed tunnel is one of the best ways to build underwater, compared to a bored tunnel where you'd have to send massive machines deep underground. 
This method is faster, simpler, and it's less risky. And unlike a bridge, it leaves the sea surface free for ships and nature. To keep the tunnel stable, the trench is backfilled after immersion. Gravel, sand, and soil are layered on top until the tunnel essentially becomes one with the seabed. From above, it'll look as if nothing ever happened. Unless, of course, you know that one of Europe's largest infrastructure projects is hidden down there. But that's not all. Thousands of skilled professionals work around the clock to ensure everything fits perfectly. It's like a giant puzzle, except each piece weighs 73,000 tons and is assembled out at sea. And the goal? A tunnel that will last at least 120 years. As usual with projects like this, there are plenty of challenges that make things interesting. Powerful tidal currents, ocean waves, and the fragility of the marine environment. They test the engineers at every turn. They must find ways to minimize impacts on flora and fauna. Sediments can't be allowed to disperse uncontrollably, and construction must be as environmentally friendly as possible. How do we make sure everything goes smoothly? Sensors and cameras monitor each step, from the seabed's movements to water quality. If something goes wrong, alarms immediately sound. Even the environmental impacts are monitored in real time. Sediments can't be stirred up randomly, and marine life gets its own protection measures. Then there's the technology that will be installed in the tunnel later on. Intelligent ventilation systems that adapt to traffic levels, sensors to detect pollutants, and lighting that ensures safety while also saving energy. But hold on, before we get too swept away by the machines, let's remember, ultimately, it's people who make this happen. Engineers, technicians, and construction workers, thousands of people from different countries labor day and night to make sure each piece of the puzzle fits together. All right, so we know how the Femarn Belt Tunnel is being built, but why? Why spend billions to create an underwater shortcut? Let's start with travelers. Imagine boarding a train in Hamburg and arriving in Copenhagen just 2.5 hours later, thanks to a 160-kilometer shortcut. No transfers, no ferries, no detours. And for anyone heading further into Sweden, the travel time could be cut by up to two and a half hours. But it gets even better. The tunnel, it's not just faster, it's also more convenient. No more hours spent rocking on a ferry while the wind turns your hair into a bird's nest. Instead, a smooth direct link that even daily commuters might love. But the tunnel isn't just a gift for travelers, it's also an economic miracle. For businesses, it means shorter transport times, lower costs, and more efficient trade between Central Europe and Scandinavia. Freight trains can roll right through with no detours or waiting. And think of the tourism possibilities. Danes in Hamburg, Germans in Copenhagen, Swedes everywhere. The potential is huge. And that's not all. Now things get green, at least somewhat. The tunnel encourages a shift of freight traffic onto rail. Fewer trucks on the roads, less CO2 in the air. That saves energy and it helps protect the environment. Granted, the construction itself leaves quite a large carbon footprint. But in the long run, the tunnel might actually help make Europe more sustainable. Then there's the European dimension. The Femarn Belt Tunnel isn't just a strip of concrete, it's a key part of the trans-European transport network, known as the Scanmed Corridor. This route it links Malta to Finland, straight across Europe. The tunnel closes a gap that brings Europe even closer together. So, what does the future hold for this mega-project? Will everything be finished on time? And how does this tunnel change our world? Let's take a look ahead. The plan is clear. By 2029, the entire project should be completed. The final segments will be lowered, everything will be sealed, roads and rails installed, and then the first test run can begin. But let's be honest, with a project of this magnitude, things rarely go off without a hitch. What if a storm disrupts the timeline, or if the concrete doesn't behave as expected? And then there's also the question of cost. Will we stick to the projected 7 billion euros, or will this end up like the Berlin airport? slightly more expensive and completed a bit later than planned. As impressive as the Feynman Belt Tunnel is, it isn't without its risks. Let's be real, a construction project of this size, it rarely runs smoothly. First up is the cost. The plan calls for 7.1 billion euros. Large-scale projects have a charming tendency to overshoot their budgets. What if material prices spike unexpectedly? Or if a storm causes delays? Costs could skyrocket. And here's the big question. Will the tunnel see enough use to pay for itself? It is funded by toll revenues, so if fewer people and businesses use it than expected, it could be headed for a financial adventure. So, 
let's talk about the engineering. We're talking about 89 colossal tunnel elements that have to be placed in the Baltic Sea with millimeter precision. The machines that can do that are impressive, but a small mistake, it can have big consequences. And then there's the seabed, soft, uneven, and sometimes temperamental. And then, something on many people's minds, the environment. The Femarn Belt isn't just a waterway, it's an ecological jewel. Dredging the seabed stirs up 19 million cubic meters of sediment. This might sound technical, but it means marine creatures' habitats get turned upside down, seagrass meadows could suffer, and porpoises, already sensitive to noise, they could become stressed. On top of that, there's the concrete production. The tunnel requires 3.2 million cubic meters of concrete. It's impressive, but also a major source of CO2 emissions. While the tunnel might make transport greener in the long term, the construction itself it leaves a carbon footprint of about 3.1 million tons of CO2. Then there's the critics. Environmental organizations warn of long-term consequences for the Baltic Sea. Locals worry about noise and disruption during construction, and some wonder whether the tunnel is even the best solution or if there might have been alternatives. These voices are important because they remind us to keep reassessing the risks. But like every big project, there are two sides. The risks are real, no doubt, but the opportunities this tunnel offers, they could be game-changing. A project like the Femarn Tunnel, it shows how far we're willing to go to bring people, countries, and markets closer together. And that wraps up our deep dive into the Femarn Belt Tunnel, a project that demonstrates how visions can become reality, but also what challenges we must overcome. A structure that will change Europe, whether we travel through it, ship our goods, or simply marvel at what engineering and teamwork can achieve. Now it's your turn. What do you think about the Femarn Belt Tunnel? A symbol of progress or a risky experiment? Would you like to use it yourself? Share your thoughts in the comments below. We can't wait to hear them. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. That really motivates us to keep researching exciting topics for you. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you never miss a video. We cover the biggest construction projects, the most fascinating innovations, and sometimes even the most surprising failures. Before you head off, why not share this video with your friends and your groups? Who knows, maybe someone is already planning their first train ride right through the Femarn Belt Tunnel. Thanks for watching, stay curious, and we'll see you next time on Big Builds. Until then, all the best.